And this is Eric Chen working in Ericsson Innovation Office. And uh, we're in the technology and emerging business. And uh, my primary role is uh, focusing on IoT and uh, data analytics. My team also have a function mainly focused on the strategic focus areas. Actually, there are three main areas. Number one is about IoT. Number two is about uh, data analytics. And number three, we're looking for killer applications uh, in the edge computing when 5G is uh, coming. So the, for the immersive uh, technology here is mainly related to the 5G and uh, distributed uh, cloud. So when it comes to uh, immersive technology, so we're mainly talking about uh, applications in the virtual reality, augmented reality, and uh, mixed reality. So in those uh, three areas, you know, we will see, Eric from Ericsson's side, we do see some challenges, mainly related to number one, lack of mobility, number two, the barky headset, and number three, the user experience, which is related to uh, motion sickness. So we see, you know, 5G and uh, the also under the umbrella of 5G, the distributed uh, cloud will be the um, a main kind of technology to tackle those issues. For example, with 5G, uh, it provides very high bandwidth and low latency. So this can deliver the high resolution content to the VR glasses. And also at the same time, we don't see 5G only as a means to uh, provide a faster network. Instead, it can provide another important tool. It can help to offload the computing from the glasses into the cloud side. And here, when we in specific, when we to offload to the cloud, we're mainly talking about offload to the mobile edge uh, on the uh, network side. So how this is gonna help to solve those problems because 5G provides a network to, uh, you can deliver the content faster, but uh, the, by offloading the computation from the glasses to the uh, mobile edge, we're able to significantly contribute to uh, reduce the size of the, uh, uh, the glass devices. And also um, we can improve the user experience by reducing the motion sickness. So the question is, where is the 5G available or will be available soon? So yes, 5G is happening right now. And uh, it, w is, it, is, it is started mainly right now, focusing on the more like uh, uh, from the mobile operator side and also for the major enterprise, provide more like a um, kind of high capacity uh, transmission layer between the buildings or between the base stations. And uh, after that one, the next step, this will get into the consumer um, market and get perceived by regular users. And uh, right now, the uh, for this year, 2018, the 5G is happening already in North America, Europe, uh, Asia Pacific area, and the many other regions. For now, when we talk about a 5G for the um, virtual reality, uh, right now the main use case we have us uh, several use cases. You know, for example, you know we're talking about uh, if you come to Ericsson Experience Center in Santa Clara, uh, you will see a kind of a, 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 like a bulldozer or digger, kind of a large machinery. And uh, basically this will enable the driver or the operator can operate this kind of a digger remotely. You don't have to go to the scene, go to the construction zone and operate that physical digger. Instead, you can sit in the uh, AC or like uh, in a very comfortable room and uh, you, uh, the, drive, the operator gonna wear a, uh, a VR uh, goggle and uh, through the VR goggle, the operator is able to control the digger might be thousands of miles away. So why we do this kind of uh, use case? What is the value? Number one, this will improve the operational efficiency a lot. Through one operator, you're able to operate multiple diggers remotely. And number two, we can significantly improve the, uh, the safety and uh, the, the operator, you don't have to go to different zones that is very hard to reach or maybe you know very dangerous to operate in. So they can operate all those things remotely. That is the one typical you know, uh, 5G use case using VR. Of course, 5G use cases can be extended way beyond these particular use cases. From Ericsson's side, we see they can use in education, tourist, uh, industry, and uh, many other areas. So right now, the, the most of those VR glasses or AR headsets uh, were used during those you know events or for demo purposes. Uh, at this stage, those ones are still tethered uh, via like a Wi-Fi. We're using Wi-Fi as the last uh, kind of uh, step to get the VR connected. 
Uh, however, we do see, uh, we're talking to a lot of device makers, and we do see they are considering to add the um, mobile connectivity into the glasses. But also we all know there is specific concerns that you know they don't want to the uh, communication module so close to, to people's uh, head. So there's all different ways, uh, including like a little bit like extended uh, box, put it under the West. So we do see a lot of solution like that going on. Question was, if there are lots of headsets all in one room, is there any type of distortions? For example, when you demo do conferences and you there's a lot of um, Wi-Fi connections that go down because there's so many, I guess, devices that are um, emitting some type of frequency. Yes, yes. Actually, during our early experience, the Wi-Fi actually do create quite some uh, interference when it comes to the uh, VR, AR headsets. And uh, that is why we see, uh, that is another reason we recommend that we're going to uh, work with device makers to put the mobility or mobile communication into these headsets. Because, you know, they today the 4G technology like LTE and also the coming 5G are definitely more, you know, uh, inter uh, more tolerate to those interference uh, when it comes to the connectivity. So when it comes to uh, AR and also eventually comes to MR, it's very important for the glasses to be aware of the situation around it, such as they need to know the 3D map in a very kind of high resolution. They need to know all those interesting points or information, extra layers of information uh, in that kind of 3D context. And all those will create much larger data sets than a regular or normal map we're consuming today. And also the glasses need to in real time try to, through the camera, uh, take a snapshot of what the um, surroundings look like and try to make a, make a sense out of it in the real time. And this is a very challenging for those glasses. That's why when it comes to 5G, we're going to provide another one, which is you know distributed cloud. And also we're going to provide, a, let's say, some key functions such as computer vision. And we deploy those computer vision capability into the distributed cloud. So today the um, infrastructure the way it is set up is a very typical we call client and server and the server is a cloud side the client is the devices and uh, when you try to put a mobile communication into the device the latency between the device and the cloud is pretty significant and usually we're talking about could be like 100 millisecond ericsson uh, is dedicated to work with the operator community and we will try to introduce another mobile edge layer you can see the edge layer sits in between the devices and the cloud. So basically the latency between the devices and the mobile edge are much, much shorter. And uh, with the 4G or enhanced 4G and later on, especially 5G, we're expecting the round trip between the uh, devices, and mobile edge computing is like uh, under 10 milliseconds. So with this kind of low latency, we're able to process those, you know, uh, high data load and uh, on the devices. Ericsson, we just uh, delivered a demo uh, this uh, February. So we worked with uh, one company, it's ODG, and uh, we worked with another computer vision company called Cepedo. And with three companies delivered a, uh, a kind of demo in basic primary setup is you know, we can use the uh, augmented reality. We transform a regular living space into an interactive uh, gaming area. So we offloaded, uh, we used the uh, computer vision at the edge and we kind of offloaded the, um, the localization function from the glasses into the room, into the uh, edge. So let's say without this edge, usually it's very difficult for AR glasses to localize. Although they have some tracking functionality, it's very hard for those AR glasses to know where they exactly are uh, in that particular room. So we use in the SLAM, we kind of put SLAM function on the network edge, and then we use a SLAM function to help the air glasses to localize where it is. Uh, I sit in the, incubate, in the uh, innovation team, and we incubate a lot of new ideas. So what I described today, especially about those like computer vision, especially about this distributed cloud part, I mean, it doesn't mean they are already in a uh, kind of official product. It will get launched soon. Instead, that means, you know, we are uh, doing a lot of uh, exploration in that area and uh, we treat them as more like a potential uh, kind of applications 
uh, and the potential business growth areas for the company. In relation to privacy uh, mm -hmm. and all of these tethered headsets and you're taking in information of people's private spaces, are there, are there special security protocols or firewalls to make sure that people's houses or environments, I, I suppose, are safe? Yeah, definitely. There are multiple uh, means uh, to uh, to improve the security, to to protect users' data and privacy. You know, some you no know, common. Pra of course, first one we have all going to after all the common practice. You know, put the security rules, put firewalls, put multiple layers of you know protection. And uh, we also need to, for example, here in this case is first one. We try to you know anonymize the information. So even though you get those data, you don't really know who the data is associated with, right? Number two, and we're, of course, we're gonna follow the best practice of protect the data while it's in motion, while they're being transferred from the devices to the cloud, and while the devices, the data is in rest, so while the data is stored, we're gonna encrypt them. Cloud has a tendency, has the capability of store large amount of data. So there's a tendency the cloud try to store the data much longer, or because they want to use it for some future purpose, but when it comes to the edge for the micro data center, mm -hmm. it does not have a lot of storage there. So what we tend to do is we try to, we take a video, we analyze it, right away we're gonna delete those data. We don't even have the need to store those data. Actually from this way, it's actually can be as safer than the cloud architecture because we don't store them. Is there a website that we can go to to find out more about specifically this innovation part of what Ericsson is doing? Uh, yes, and uh, I think you know we have uh, a lot of information uh, on the Ericsson.com website, and uh, you can definitely see a lot of information about 5G and the distributed cloud.